Let's hear a little from Josh Allen on his emotions as he exited the field, and then we'll talk a little more about the overtime rule and what maybe they can do about it. It was, just, it was, it was tough, you know, to, to be in that moment. Um, again, had a lot of respect for, for Pat. You know, he throws a winning touchdown, and he comes straight over and finds me. Um, you know, to, to be in that situation and to do that, that's that was pretty cool of him to, to do that. And, um, you know, just – Obviously, it sucks the way the way it happened. Um, you know, we we wanted to win that game. We had our opportunities, and um, yeah, I I taking it all in and hoping holding on to that feeling and uh, making sure that you know we don't we don't feel like this again. And uh, you know, like I said, back to back years in the same spot. Um, it's tough to take in, but you know, it's part of the game. It's part of the learning process, and we gotta again we gotta use this and figure out how we can be better and. Um, how we can, uh, you know, accomplish what we want to accomplish. To his credit, Josh Allen did not complain about the overtime rule. He said, hey, look, we have to make the plays when we can. Now, he doesn't need to complain about it because plenty of others are. And maybe the next time they win the coin toss and the rule goes their way. There is a real dynamic in the NFL among the teams. When they get screwed by a bad rule, they, they say maybe we shouldn't push to change it. Because next time around, maybe it goes our way. Although the Packers have been burned by it a couple of times. The Patriots have benefited from it a couple of times. And the Chiefs now, who proposed the rule change to guarantee a possession for each team after they got burned by it three years ago in the AFC Championship game at home against the Patriots. They proposed it. It didn't go anywhere. And they should be glad it didn't go anywhere because now they got got their opportunity. (laughs) But it's, it's a simple, basic, visceral thing. Whatever the rule is, it needs to give each team a fair opportunity to prevail. The idea of a coin toss deciding the outcome of the game. And last night, whoever got that ball first, whoever got it first was scoring a touchdown. The way that it was going at the end of the game and the way the offenses are supercharged now and the rules are skewed in favor of the offense, they they recognize the need for change when they made it no more walk-off field goals on a first drive of overtime they need to take it the rest of the way half measure needs to become a full measure because it's not satisfying how's it satisfying to not see Patrick Mahomes get his chance against Tom Brady in 2018 to not see Matt Ryan get his chance against Tom Brady in Super Bowl 51 and to not see last night Josh Allen get a chance to match what Patrick Mahomes did in that division around game and and hopefully Chris if last night's game doesn't do it nothing ever will no I, I would say that too you're right it, it really is a tough one I mean again you know me I'm old school forever I was kind of like ah just leave it the way it is let's just o- overtime sudden death uh but the rules were tweaked and I know now I look at it and I just in a game like that last night too where no quarterback made a mistake deserving to lose uh that's where you just have a hard time swallowing it where you just look at it man and go whoa both guys are phenomenal. You're right. It just seemed like whoever got lucky to get the ball, win the coin toss, was going to go down and score the touchdown and win the football game. The defenses were exhausted at that point. Uh, so I, I'm with you. It's definitely one I'm certain like, – I'm, I'm ready to listen to and maybe take into account. Maybe it's just a playoff thing. Maybe it's not in the regular yes. season. Maybe you just make it the Correct. playoffs because now you have the high-quality quarterbacks and the best teams and the best players at the position that way to where it makes more sense. But uh, I'm with you, Mike. I I think uh, last night might have changed my mind a little bit in this subject, and I'm, I'm glad Allen didn't make any excuses either. That's, that's the way to handle it. We need to strip out some of the stupid that gets brought up when the NFL defends its current system, and one of the things that marred the process after the 2009 NFC Championship game when the Saints had the walk-off field goal and they realized they needed to change it, well, we have to have the same rule for the playoffs that we have for the regular season. Well, why? Why do you have to have the same rule? I mean, the regular season game can end in a tie. The playoff game can't. It's inherently different right there. It's different right away. So why do we have to have have have, uh, same procedures for both? You have a special postseason overtime procedure. And, you know, one, one thing that maybe you could use the same rule other than tie versus play until it's over The proposal that the Ravens made last year, and I haven't dusted this off and written about it again yet, but the spot and choose. Do you remember we talked about that back in March? The Ravens' idea that one team chooses where the drive is going to begin to commence overtime, what yard line the ball is put on, 
and the other team chooses whether to play offense or defense. And last night, <laughs> last night, even if the Bills had chosen the one the Kansas City won. I still think the Chiefs take the ball and go 99 yards down the field. It seems so like it. I don't, I don't know that that's foolproof either. Right, right. But just, but something that is more fair than having so much ride on the flip of a coin. You don't want it riding on the flip of a coin. And the idea of sudden death. Dean Blandino's point. Well, the NFL wants to have the idea that you need to stay in the room and keep the game on and keep your eyes open because the game can end on any play. Who's turning off overtime of a playoff game? Who's going to get a sandwich yeah, that's during over. overtime of yeah, a playoff that's game? That's old school that's thought. Dumb. That's old that's world. That's dumb. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, nobody's turning that off in that game last night just because it's, oh, no, the game can end at any moment. And then everybody's tuned in to go, what the hell's going to happen next? Are you kidding me? I mean, just both of these quarterbacks with the throws, I mean, lasers down the middle, down the sideline, sidearm touch throws, nobody was turning that off. Like I said, it's just I feel like the most basic of casual NFL fans last night was going, whoa, what the hell am I watching with these two guys playing quarterback? It, it's I don't care who you are, whether you're you know an ex NFL Hall of Fame quarterback or somebody that just tunes in occasionally on Sunday. That was one that just pops out to you. That really was. This is this game for the ages. People are going to talk about this game forever. I mean, it was more emotional mood swings. My little boy, Patrick Mahomes fan, right? He's sitting there. He had four meltdowns in the last three minutes of the game. He cried. He was happy. He cried. He was happy, and then he was happy again. I mean, it was just it was unbelievable it had everything to offer screw sudden death in that scenario i'm with you thank you yeah. thank you agreed hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports